This episode of Fine Scale Modeler's new product rundown features Airfix's big Hawker Typhoon, Trumpeter's Cesarevich Battleship, Exact's Tiger, Helmets from Fox 2, and Polar Light's Little Reliant. Hi, and welcome to Fine Scale Modeler's new product rundown. I'm Tim Kidwell. And I'm Erin Skinner. Welcome to our Halloween special. Today we start off with what might be one of the biggest models we've seen this year on the NPRD. It is big. Airfix's 124th scale Hawker Typhoon Mark 1B. Intended to be an interceptor for the Royal Air Force, the Tiffy, as it was known, reached its full potential as a ground attacker. The Typhoon is a big airplane. 124th scale is a big scale, so this is a big model. Yeah, there are more than 500 parts here, mostly molded in blue-gray plastic. Surface detail is a mix of crisp, raised, and recessed lines and rivets. They've even produced a stressed skin effect. Detail has characterized Airfix's 124th scale aircraft since the range was introduced in the 1970s, but the company ups its game here. The kit includes a very complete interior, starting with the framing for the cockpit, engine mount, and wing spar. Detail in the cockpit includes controls, seat with separate harness, plumbing, and a two-part instrument panel. There's even a sharp-looking pilot posed so that one hand grasps the joystick, the other the throttle. Up front is a detailed Napier 24-cylinder engine with the provision to install a small electric motor. All that interior means it's step 90 before you start working on the exterior, the bottom of the wing. At which point, you're back inside to build and install the wing guns and bays as well as the main gear wells. Even the wing fuel tanks are included. Options include two different tails, movable control surfaces, even the trim tabs are separate, flaps up or down, three or four bladed props, and canopy open or closed. There are three basic build options. All opened up, the weapon bays and engine cowl, including the chin radiator, partially opened up with the weapon bays and upper engine cowl, and all closed up. It take a lot of guts to build and paint all that gorgeous detail, then close it up. Optional underwing stores included eight rockets, two fuel tanks, and two each of 500 and 1,000 pound bombs. Cartograph decals provide markings for four Tiffies, all in RAF Daylight Fighter camouflage. Two wear invasion stripes. One has a shark mouth. The fourth a great name, Pulverizer 4. In addition to four color marking diagrams, the instructions show computer renderings of the planes with information about the real things. This kit packs a lot of punch and should be an outstanding addition to any display shelf. Next, let's look at Trumpeter's 1350th scale Cesarevich. Built in France for the Imperial Russian Navy, the 12,000-ton vessel saw combat during the 1905 Russo-Japanese War as well as limited service during World War I. It was part of the fledgling Soviet Navy before it was scrapped in the mid-1920s. Pre-dreadnoughts, all metal warships built at the end of the 19th century have become a popular subject for kit makers of late. Molded in gray, the hull halves show the ship's distinctive tumble-down shape. Seams between the hull plating, as well as the portholes, hatches, and covers look sharp. The superstructure and decks show the same attention with neat planking and fixture detail. Small things like ship's boats, machine guns, davits, anchors, and props are outstanding. The main guns have open muzzles and the masts are neatly done. A stand is provided with a nameplate. Photo etched metal frets round out the parts, providing railings, gun shields and mounts, ladders, walkways, and hatches. A small decal sheet provides Russian Navy ensigns and jacks, hull names and crests. These ships are totally steampunk and it's great to see them hitting store shelves. It looks great, Trumpeter. Staying with the Russian subjects, we have exact scale models Gaz 2330 Tiger. The Tiger is a four-wheel drive infantry mobility vehicle used by the Russian Army since 2006. A bit bigger than a Humvee, but lighter than an MATV, the Tiger is designed to move men and material around the battlefield. The field grade parts look outstanding. The major body parts feature sharp lines, minimal ejector pin marks, and no flash despite the complex shapes. Exact doesn't take any shortcuts on the detail, even though the finished model is barely five inches long. There's a complete chassis and suspension. The engine is there too. It includes the block, transmission, plumbing, and fan. The hood can be posed open to show it off. In the cab are seats, ammunition racks, a dashboard with decal instruments, and pedals. The windows are crystal clear. The interior of some Russian Tigers are covered in camouflaged material. The kit supplies decals for that. Armament for the turret is a PKP machine gun and an AGS-17 grenade launcher. The tires are rubber. Not for the faint of heart, the kit comes with a bunch of photo-etched metal. 
It supplies skid plates under the vehicle, mud flaps, straps for the ammo racks and stowage, and the radiator grill. The markings are pretty spare. A few red stars and Russian guards emblems, but two of the three options are in three color camo. A few years ago, it was hard to find models of modern Russian equipment. This kit is the latest in a recent surge that has blown the market wide open. And a nice kit it is. Now, some of you may have noticed these little helmets springing up around us in the last episode. These may be the perfect thing to dress your display shelves, especially if you build modern aircraft. Fox 2 makes 13 of these half-scale helmets based on the headgear worn by American pilots. Each includes a retractable visor, lining, and chin strap, just like the real thing. In addition to the USAF Thunderbirds and US Navy Blue Angels, there are colorful designs from 11 Navy squadrons. Imagine having a Tomcat in Sundowner's markings with this thing sitting next to it on the shelf. How awesome would that be? Can we please get a kit of the Reliant to match the other Star Trek models out there? Modelers have asked that question in the last couple of Most Wanted Kit surveys we've done. Well, Polar Lights has answered with a nifty 1-1000 scale Reliant as seen in the Wrath of Khan. This ship was the center of the story from the discovery of Khan until its detonation with the Genesis device. Its relatively simple design is reflected in the kit's 36 parts. Cleanly molded in white plastic, the parts can be snapped together without glue. There are clear parts for the Boussard collectors, the warp and the cell sides, impulse engines, and other parts. A stand with a metal shaft and optional ball joint hold the spacecraft in flight. A pretty decal sheet provides windows, hull numbers and names, and some of the pinstriping. Missing is any mention of the Aztec paneling that marked the movie era Trek ships. Polar Lights has announced a set of decals to do the ship, but it isn't available as of yet. If you want a little extra zip, check out Paragraphics Photo Etched Metal Detailing Set. This is a terrific looking model and I can't wait to get started on one, maybe with some lights. While Aaron's dreaming, look for reviews of the Reliant and Typhoon in upcoming issues of Fine Scale Modeler magazine. You can see these and other new products in the November issue on sale now. Thanks for visiting FineScale.com. I'm Tim Kidwell. And I'm Aaron Skinner. We'll see you next time. Happy, Happy Halloween. 350 scale Savart. <laughs> I totally forgot what I had to say. Uh -huh. <laughs>